Take your Bibles, if you would, please. Let's see here. How does that go? There. I sat on it. Take your Bibles, First uh, Corinthians chapter 10, if you would please. Um, what did I do with my Bible? There it is. My sister hid it from me. I'm going to blame her for everything. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Last Sunday morning, uh, God laid it on my heart um, to begin this sermon. Um, I was preaching a series on the Ten Commandments. And... Um, got through two of them and God kind of moved me away from that and just laid a burden on my heart laid a burden on my heart for my life my own life and he laid a burden on my heart for uh, your life I care about where you end up I care about where you end up. As I said earlier, there is a man, his name was Rob Skiba, and I met him at a prophecy conference that we did together in Branson, Missouri. And um, we thought, you know, we began to talk. And we thought that we were going to hit it off pretty good until I brought up the issue of the King James Bible. And the, the conversation went downhill very quickly from there. Uh, he became um, pretty, pretty arrogant um, that he had a knowledge that was superior to mine. And... Um, I talked about him on one of my programs and then I, as I kind of watched his ministry and uh, as I looked at his website I saw a statement of faith and it was absolutely ridiculous the things that he was saying about the Bible. Um, then he um, had gotten off into the Hebrew Roots movement which is a very dangerous movement. It basically says that grace and your works must go together in order for you to get to heaven. You must do all the right things. You must keep the feast days. You must be this. You must be that. The way the Jews were. And it's a very, very deadly, dangerous, dangerous gospel to believe in. It, it is a damnable heresy, is what it is. He got off into that, and then I saw him get off into flat earth. And I, and I thought, man, he is just going crazy. I have not mentioned his name in several years. But I was told last week that he passed away suddenly from cardiac arrest. Now, he, I believe, he was maybe younger than I was. I'm not positive. He may, we may be the same age or, the, or just close. I did not want him to die. I did not want him to die and face God's judgment on his belief. I did not want him to die. And he was an adversary to me as much as I was to him. And uh, we just did not get along at all. The, the very next conference I had, 
God's got a sense of humor. He put his table right next to mine. And I went, oh. And I basically just, we just ignored each other. Which was probably the wise thing to do. I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. I don't, I personally don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want my wife to die and go to hell. I don't want any of my children to die and go to hell. I do not want anybody in this church to die and go to hell. I do not want anybody listening to me either this right now, this Sunday morning, or you listen to this later. I do not want you to die and go to hell. I do not want my adversaries, my enemies, I do not want that out of them. I want that all men should be saved. I, I, I want what God wants. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what God said. That's what I want. So I started this message last week called, This is Your Life. And I just kind of drew out a few little graphics here centered around 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to get into uh, the journey that Israel took from Egypt to Canaan land. Now, some of you this morning, I believe you've settled it in your mind and in your heart that Canaan land is it. Nothing's going to stop you from going there. Nothing can stop you from going there, and you're going, no matter what happens. I believe that. I believe that there, it's possible that some are either sitting here or listening to my voice right now, that you've got one foot in Canaan land, one foot in Egypt. And you, are, you have not decided yet which way you're going. You're the one I'm going to preach to this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. They were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. And I want everybody in my family, listen, if you think that I'm going to preach to everybody else but my family, you're wrong. I want to preach to my family first. I'm going to preach to my wife, I'm going to preach to my children. I'm going to preach to my grandchildren. I'm going to preach to all of my children's spouses. I'm going to preach to the whole lot of them. Now I'm going to preach to your family too. Because I care enough about your family. I don't want your family to die and go to hell. With many of them, God was not well pleased. And you need to stop and ask yourself the question, Is God pleased with my life? You don't want me judging you. You don't want me accusing you of anything. You don't want me to bring up your sin. You don't want me to say anything to you about what's wrong with your life. That's fine. But you have to ask the question, is God pleased with your life? How you're living it right now, is God pleased with it? Because if he's not, then it sounds to me like you've got one leg in Egypt. And God knows it. And He's not happy about it. And He's not going to be happy about it. And you're not going to be happy about it until you decide which side you're going to be on. With many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. He didn't say they were overthrown in Egypt. How many Jews died in Egypt? None. None. Not a one of them that I know of. 
Not one Jew died in Egypt. God spared all of them. Brought them out with a mighty hand. But there was a whole mess of them that died in the wilderness. And where was it that they were always wanting to turn back to? Egypt. Egypt. They still had part of their heart left in Egypt. And it seemed like every time something come up, that was the first thing they wanted to run to was Egypt. Let's, let's stop and pray for a minute. Father, help me to preach this message. Help me to say what you want me to say. Help me to say what pleases and honors you. Father, help me to preach um, to me, to my wife, to my children, my family, grandchildren, this church, these people, Lord, that join us every week. Those, Lord, that are listening around the world, those who are listening in Kenya. Father, help me to love them enough to warn them, to tell them the truth. Lord, remind us, dear God, of the nature that we still have in this flesh body. It is very wicked, hell-deserving. It's a grotesque monster is what it is. And it's going to be burnt up one of these days. And Lord, I don't want my soul stuck with it when that happens. God, we pray, dear God, for deliverance this morning. We pray, dear God, that you would set those who are in captivity free. We pray, dear God, Lord, that you would take those who are in bondage and loose them from the bondage that they're in. We just pray, dear God, that your Holy Ghost would come down in this place in mighty power and transform the lives of people, Lord, that need changed in their lives. Lord, open up our eyes to our sins. Lord, open up our eyes to our own unwillingness to confess, our own unwillingness, dear God, to turn from our wicked ways. God, just open up our eyes to your word this morning and help us to be obedient to your call, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Roy, I, I, Roy, yes. Barney. Yes. <laughs> I hate to wake you up, but I need you for a second. Okay. okay. Roy, uh, Roy lets me use him for an example. Because he's told this story many times. By the way, he stood here thir uh, Wednesday night, or Wednesday night and told everybody that that day, that Wednesday, he had been dry 32 years. Give him a hand this morning. But if you were to ask him the truth this morning, does he still remember what bourbon tastes like? Still remember how Jack tastes? Jack and Coke together? Yeah, don't waste Coke on it. Just, just give me the Jack. You see, Roy's got a thing in his heart. It's in his flesh. It's part of who he is. It's part of his nature. By the grace of God, for 32 years, God has kept him from going back. But every time trouble hits him in his heart and in his life, it is in his nature to run back to Egypt. Am I saying it right? You can go sit down now. And if it's that way with him, then look at your preacher. It's that way with me. And it's that way with everybody sitting in here, including every member of my family, every member of your family, and everybody that you know. It is in our nature that when, that when times get hard, when troubles stir up, when things do not go our way, it is in our nature to immediately want to run back to Egypt 
And, le- and I'm going to show you this morning what Egypt represents. So let's keep reading here in 1 Corinthians 10. With many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play. Neither let us commit, what's that word? Fornication. Do you know what that includes? Everything outside of the marital act. Everything outside of the marital act between a husband and a wife. That's what that includes. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell one day. Three and twenty, that twenty three thousand people God killed because of fornication. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents. Neither murmur as ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It is in your nature... To run back to wilderness. To run back to Egypt. I pointed out last week that there's an approximation. We know 600,000 men left Egypt. So we took a guess. They had wives. They had children. Possibly some 2 million people left Egypt. And out of those 2 million people, only 2 Of those two million people made it into the promised land. Only two of them. Joshua and Caleb. Now there was more with them. But what happened was those people who left Egypt perished in the wilderness. And their children that came along that were born in the wilderness were saved and spared. And got to go into the promised land along with Joshua and Caleb. But out of the two million people, only Joshua and Caleb made it into the promised land. And I'm telling you, few there be that find it, God said. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Now, here's what Egypt represents. Exodus chapter 1 verse 14. The Egyptians, it's what it's speaking of, the Egyptians made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Now I'm going to ask you this morning, what are you in bondage to? In other words, what is it that draws you back to Egypt? What do you, what do you want to run to every time something gets hard, goes wrong? Every time some accident happens, every time, every time you do something stupid, every time, every time your emotions are out of whack or whatever it is, what happens? What is it that you run to every time you want to go back to Egypt? What's back there for you? Is it the lust of your flesh? Is it the, the fornication that you used to be a part of? The adulteries, the cheating on your spouse, using your phone as a, as a method of contacting people who are looking for just a, a quick hookup. Did you know that there could be somebody in this church sitting here right now that's got an app on their phone that does that? It is quite possible that there could be somebody sitting in this church, that church over yonder, that church over here, that church over here, that is a pedophile, and it could be somebody in here. 
We could have closet sodomites, closet adulterers, guys with porn on their phone, porn on their tablet. They don't go out and buy magazines anymore. You can get caught with those. But that's what they run to. Every time something goes bad, every time something happens, every time they get mad at their wife, every time they get mad at their husband, every time something happens, boom, they go running right back to that. Just like, just like Israel. And that life is bitter. There's nothing sweet about that life, is there? That life is bondage. That life is bitter. That life is hard. They made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Exodus 2 verse 23, And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. They, and they cried. I've been down on my face before God crying. God deliver me from this. God take this out of me. God get this away from me. I don't want it. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. You're blessed. And let me tell you how blessed you are. You have a God that cares. When he hears you cry. Don't tell me you don't. Amen. Don't tell me you don't. Exodus chapter 6. Verse 5. God said this. And I've also heard of the groaning of the children of Israel. So that's what chains of bondage does to people. The bondage that you're in right now, the leg that you've got in Egypt, that leg is actually in a trap. And Brother George, animal traps, are they usually made with cushions? They're usually made with spikes and teeth and jagged edges because we don't really care if it hurts the rabbit or the fox or whatever it is that we're trapping we don't really care if it hurts them because we're going to kill them anyway and skin them you got one leg in Egypt in a trap and it hurts I've also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage and I've remembered my covenant. So wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Do you believe what God said this morning? Do you believe it? And then he said, I will take you for, to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. Now listen. I know, I, I know, in this church, we have drunks, dope addicts, Adulterers, fornicators, we got all kinds of sinners in this church. But you're the people that God wants to take unto himself and make a people out of. You're the ones. 
If he didn't want you, you wouldn't be here. If he didn't want you, you wouldn't be here. He'd shovel you out, toss you out, say, go on, get out of here. I don't want you. I know you. I can't do anything with you. You're worse to me than Esau. Get out. That's what he would do. And then he said, ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the, under the burdens of the Egyptians. You, there will be absolutely no doubt in your mind whatsoever who your God is and what he can do for you. And every time you have the urge and the impulse to lean back toward Egypt, God will take you and pull you his way. Won't he? Every time. Exodus 2.23. I, I may have already read this one. It came to pass in the process of time the king of Egypt died. I already did. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Deuteronomy 5, 6. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Psalm 68, 6. God said it to solitary in families. Hey. Some of you. Some of you listen now. Part of your problem is you feel all alone. Like no one understands you. No one loves you. And no one cares about you. And God is the one who takes people like that and gives them a family. And churches are families. And yes, families like to slap one another around every now and then. Families like to fight every now and then. Don't we, families? But we're family. And if anybody else messes with us, I'm going to be there. Amen? Amen? He said, I'm the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God said at the solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Um, I told this story earlier during Sunday school. A, um, after I preached Friday night down in Eldon, Missouri, uh, the, the pastor asked me to talk to his sister. And she said that her son had gone to a fundamental conservative Bible college. And while he was there, he learned how to practice m magic. And I mean witchcraft magic. Some, there was another student there that taught him that. And after he got out of that college, he ended up hooked up with a woman who was a practicing witch. And now they're together. So here's this boy that grew up in a fundamental Bible-believing church. Went to a Christian school. Went to a fundamental Bible-believing Bible college and is now a practicing wizard. There's, I would, I, and, and I, told, I told the sister this, and I want you to listen to me. I said, she asked me what to do about it. I said, the only thing you can do is pray. Pray, 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 and then pray some more, and then when you're done praying, pray again. And keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. Pray until it's your last breath and you pray. Now, I said... Now, I'm going to tell you something, and don't get mad at me. But Jesus himself told us this. If you love your son more than you love God, don't do that. Your son may never come to Jesus. 
He may die and split hell wide open. You might as well be prepared for that because that just might happen. And I would hate to see you mad at God over that because he didn't answer your prayer to save your son. Some people just die and go to hell. Some people just never, ever get right with God. Some people never do. And those, those some peoples just happen to be somebody's sons and daughters. And I said, you have to settle it in your mind that you're going to serve God even if, you're, even if your children won't. You're going to serve God. I love my children. I love my children. But don't expect me to follow you if you turn away from God. Because I won't. I won't. I love my God. More than I love my wife, my mother, my sister, all my children, my grandchildren. I love my God more than I love anybody in this world. And I'm not going to follow you to hell. Psalm 68, 6. God said to solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Psalm 73, 6, therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Maybe your, maybe your sin is not lust. Maybe your sin is not alcohol. Maybe your sin is not drugs. Maybe you sit there and go, oh, those pe stupid people that drink, them stupid people take them drugs. I just don't understand that. Them stupid people do all that stuff. Bless God, I don't do that. Your problem is pride. And let me tell you something. Pride is a worse, heavier, thicker chain than all the drugs and all the alcohol in the world is. Pride is. You know why? Because God will resist the proud. He will resist the proud, but he will give grace to those who will humble themselves before him, who will bow before him, who will turn their heart to God and say, God, forgive me. God, have mercy on my soul. God, forgive me of my sins. God will forgive every one of you. But the pride, he'll say, I've got no room for you. Get out. Pride is a terrible chain of bondage. Jeremiah 34, 13, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen. Exodus 13, 3, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. God said, Remember the day. Do you remember the day? Raise your hand if you remember the day when God brought you out of the house of bondage. Some, raise your hand if you remember the day. Now, this is where I want to talk to my family for a minute. Exodus 13, 14. He said, it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what is this? That thou shalt say unto him, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. You see, my children don't know everything that there is to know about their daddy. They don't know. My children don't know everything there is to know about their mama. They don't know. I don't know everything there is to know about my mother. 
there are things in my mother's past that she has not told us children. But I remember the day when she came down in, in this church to one of these benches and laid all of her sins out before the Lord and said, God, take them away from me. And over the years, she would try to instill in me and my sister, son, serve the Lord. Son, see those people down there? Don't hang around those people down there. Why can't I hang around those people down there? Son, I'm just telling you, don't hang around those people down there. They're not good. Son, don't go that way. Son, stay out of that, stay out of that man's house. Son, don't do this. Son, don't do that. My mom had been down a road that I was not aware of. And she knew what was down certain places and how certain people's families were going to be. And she tried to stop me and say, son, don't do this and don't go that way and don't go. Don't don't set yourself over in this place over here. Stay away from those people over there. And I'm going to say to every one of my children, daughters, sons, listen to your daddy. Egypt's not worth it. Egypt's not worth it. Your daddy used to have a foot in Egypt. And for a while, I didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. Things you don't know about your dad, things you'll never know about your dad. But I'm telling you, there was a day when God brought me out of bondage and set my feet on a rock and said, Mike, this is the way we're going to walk. Walk with me. This is why I still try to tell my children, children, don't, don't go this way. Children, don't go over there. Children. Don't hang around these people. Children, don't make friends with the world. Children, don't watch this on television. And my, my kids are grown up. Children, don't listen to this music. Children, Sunday morning you need to be in church. Children, Sunday night you need to be in church. Children, Wednesday night you need to be in church. Children, you need to get make sure things are right with God. Children... That this is why your daddy still says those things to you. It's because I know more about you than you think I know. I just ain't going to tell you what I know. But I know what Egypt pulls on you. And I know the bondage that you turn to every time something goes wrong. Your mama knows it too. And we'd hate to see you turn around and start marching back to Egypt. Now let me say something to you. Something I've, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. Out of all the people, Gary, that, that left Egypt, how many of them walked back to Egypt? Not a one. God killed them. He didn't let them go back to Egypt. He killed them. I don't want to bury my children 
and not know where they are. Don't make your daddy do that. I don't want to bury any one of you and not know for a fact where you are. Don't make me do that. For I don't know who it is. But this morning is the day that you're going to leave Egypt for good. Today's the day. Who's willing to listen to daddy and say, son, this, this is how God brought us out. We, we used to be in bondage. You, you, you were too little. You don't remember this. This happened before you were born. But we used to be in bondage. Your mom and I. And God drew us out. Saved us with a mighty hand. I walked through, I walked through the middle of an ocean. Dry, dry as could be. I saw fish inside the water. I saw that. I saw God's cloud on the day that he appeared on Mount Sinai. Son, God drew your daddy out of bondage. And I may not get to go, but I want you to go. Today's the day that you're going to come out of Egypt.